Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm Lisa Smith. I am from the Cape Ann Climate Coalition. We're hosting this tonight. We're really happy to have you here. And um, can everybody hear me okay? Okay, great. So, um, anyways, we're really happy to have you here because we think it's awesome that the Fishermen's Wives got this grant from the government, a $2 million grant to make, really? We said two million, it's a huge come up, isn't it? So they got this $2 million grant um, to make the fisheries more energy efficient, which is great because it'll bring down the greenhouse gas emissions, which are driving climate change, and the fisheries will save money on, on energy. So that's great, they'll save money, and so it's like a win-win situation um, for everybody. So tonight we have three people who will be here um, presenting. We have um, Angela Sanfilippo from the Gloucester Fishermen's Wives Association, and most of you in the room know who she is. She's the president of, of that. And then um, we also have Noah Oppenheim. And I'll just read his little bio here. He is the principal of Homus Strategies based in Brunswick, Maine. He's a natural resource policy consultant with a focus on supporting fishing and other resource dependent communities. He's worked as a commercial fisherman and fisheries observer in Alaska. A he's worked as a staffer in the US Congress and he used to lead a fisheries trade association in California. In his current role, Noah has worked on behalf of tribes, state government, and fishermen's organizations to advance community and resource sustainability. And he was hired by the grant to um, do this project, to um, help the fisheries become energy efficient and do the studies. And then the third person we have here tonight, I don't have a detailed bio for her. Um, her name's Loie Hayes, and she's an energy efficiency coordinator, and she's working on this project, and she's from this wonderful organization called the Green Energy Consumer Alliance, and they're using her for consulting services. So, um, so yeah, that's all I really have to say right now. I'm going to have... Angela, come up here, and she's going to say a few words. Thanks. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for inviting us to make this presentation because it's the best way that we can spread the word is people to people. Um, well, excuse me, is this being recorded? Yes. Everyone who knows this is being recorded, so in case someone doesn't want to be on camera, sit away from the camera. You have to let people know you're recording. Thank you. Um, I just want to tell you how this project came about. Um, for the last couple of years, we've been, and we are involved with the solid shore offshore wind. And was one of the meetings that everybody was complaining how to cut down CO2 carbons that people are not taking it serious. And I said, you know, we can change every engine and it's for in Gloucester, and I'm sure we'll be saving a lot of CO2 carbon. And somebody said, how much do you want? And I just said, I want $200 million. Because I spoke to the big boat people in order to change an engine in their boat, it's about half a million dollars. And I wasn't just talking about Gloucester. This is all Massachusetts. So we finished the discussion. Nothing happened. And a day or two later, I was talking with Valerie Nelson, that you all know. And I was telling her, and she says, Angela, before you can ask for that money, you have to do a study to make sure that this is worth work. I said, how am I going to do that? She goes, listen. Call them at the market's office. They're still open because the government is all Democrat. They are going to do appropriations. And if they like what you present to them, they will help you put in the application and see what happens. You know, tell them it better that you don't know anything attached to these things. 
you just do it out of your, uh, so I called them the Marquis office and they said, yes, we're still open. We are open for another week. So if you can get your project into us, we will do our best if it's a worthy project. I called up, closed the phone, I said, oh my God, who's going to write this project now? But I have another friend who is part of the deal, um, Sarah Schumann. I called her up and I said, Sarah, this is what happened. Can you write this grant? I have no idea where to start. She says, okay, I will come up to Gloucester, spend a couple of days with you there. So Sarah came up, then we asked Joshua Wiersman, who is a, a marine economist, to join us, and another person uh, from Boston. At the 11th hour, we put that proposal together. It's not a grant, it's a, a federal appropriation for $1.9 million. And we submitted, and then they told us, you know, don't, don't think this is gonna happen tomorrow. It's gonna be sometime in the fall, might be after the election. So, you know, we, we went along, do our work, once in a while, they, they would call, or I would call and find out where things going. And I really got excited when she told me that they had a, a meeting and the Secretary of Commerce heard about this proposal and asked that she would be given a copy. And after she said, this project needs to be funded because it's a good project. But it wasn't until Christmas Eve last year around three o'clock in the afternoon that I received a call from Senator Marquis' office to say, Angela, your request has been funded. I almost passed out, you know, like, but and in myself, I said, okay, now it's Christmas, forget about this, we start again on New Year's uh, Day. So that brought us together with Noah. We have Noah, we have Josh in the project, we have Sue, uh, Sarah, myself and other, other other supporting people. It took us a, a long time to do the applications, you know, the paperwork, put everything in place. But finally, I think the beginning of September, we really launched the program. Actually May, no, not May, August, we had, um, we created an advisory board and we had an, op uh, an event to, to kick it off from, from that. So, I'm going to start talking and I'm going to allow Noah, who's been doing all the paperwork, to really explain what this project entails. I also want to recognize the Fatih Romeo. She is the Vice President at the Gloucester Fisherman's Wife. So thank you again and Noah, it's all yours. tonight because this project wouldn't exist without Angela's leadership. And um, like J.J. Bartlett, who is the president of the uh, Fishing Partnership Support Services, uh, told me at our meeting a couple months ago, we all work for Angela. And it's true. Um, it's been uh, a wonderful journey so far. You know why J.J. said that? Because he always tells me, way back then, 95, 96, when we created at the Alcatraz, and it was Senator Kennedy, Senator Carey, Colonel Locke, and some other people. They cornered him and they said, we need to remember that we all work for Angela. Sorry. <laughs> it's true, it's true. The, the, the Massachusetts delegation knows it well. Um, and, and so do I now as project manager for Energy Efficient Fisheries. So who of, of, of you all is directly involved in commercial fisheries, your your day to day. One, two, three, perfect, and four, of course. Who here has been on a commercial fishing boat in the last year? Five years? Okay, we're getting off there. But the commercial fishing vessels, uh, if you've seen them, I, I, I can ask how many of you have looked at one in the last week. There we go. Okay, perfect. Um, so you know, fishing vessels are, uh, to a T, powered by diesel. 
they are energy intensive machines, and they are designed for better or worse to uh, go out to sea, catch fish, and come back with their crew alive. Um, beyond that, that is the, the full extent of the design schema when it comes to energy efficiency. Um, but we all know that this industry needs to be a part of the state and the nation's plans to decarbonize. It must happen. Uh, we are putting this project together because the fishing industry knows that it must do its part, but it also knows that getting out ahead of mandates is the pathway to success. This is an industry, as uh, many of you know, that does not respond well to uh, government intervention when uh, safety and cost effectiveness are put secondary to other objectives. Um, and there's a good reason for that. Fishermen want to come home alive, they want to run a business with predictability, and with, uh, the, the, uh, in the end, the, the profit motive, but also the ability to, uh, to continue their tradition. Um, so this program that we put together uh, recognizes that the time to take action is now. This is already too late of a moment to be having this conversation, quite frankly, and I think this climate Action Coalition understands that well. Here we are, we've received these funds and we are going to be partnering with leaders in this community, with politicians in Boston and DC, and with leaders in the fishing industry around the country, folks in Sitka, Alaska, who are going to be putting the very first hybrid commercial, fi commercial fishing vessel in the country in the water this year. Uh, folks up in Maine, where I'm from, who are pioneering uh, a, an electric outboard motor distribution program to familiarize folks with the technology, and other state agencies or federal agencies that are dipping a toe into the water on these kinds of programs but need to learn from folks like us about where to start. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say that Folks like Angela in the fishing industry have been conservation leaders. Oh, no, it's good. Thanks, Lily. Um, the, this industry's legacy of conservation, um, which has been masked, unfortunately, by, uh, by politics, by uh, other issues, externalities that, unfortunately, um, drive a wedge between fishermen and the, the real objective, which is marine conservation. Uh, it, nonetheless, folks like Angela have been leading since what, 1976? 77. Um, 77, keeping uh, offshore oil drilling out of the Gulf of Maine, uh, keeping ocean dumping programs, dredge spoil dumping programs out of the uh, pristine waters of uh, of this region, of supporting the Stellwagen Bank Marine Sanctuary, the list goes on and on. We'll add energy efficiency and emission reduction to that list. And when we're done here, building a new program uh, and a path forward from this foundational level, we're going to be in a, in a position to, to set ourselves up for success in the years to come. So I'll spend some time talking about the project objectives here. This is a, a highly multifaceted project. Um, as program manager, I am charged with administrative tasks, with making sure the bills get paid, making sure that the Fed's boxes are ticked. I am not an engineer. I am not an expert on energy use. And uh, for that reason, we've hired experts who aren't here with us tonight, um, as well as experts who are here tonight uh, who are deeply familiar with the programs and incentives that are available to businesses. We'll hear from Lowy later. Um, but, uh, but I can certainly describe these projects to you. So our, our first two objectives are to develop the in-house expertise and capacity to assist commercial fishermen with applying for grants for energy efficiency. 
um, and emission reduction programs. What we'll, what we'll be doing is creating a consulting service to provide information about what grants are available and then provide grant writing uh, assistance. So uh, that's going to allow the benefits of existing programs to be spread far beyond their initial uh, or their existing scope. Um, the second objective is to communicate issues around energy efficiency and emission reduction to the fishing industry more broadly. It's critically important that knowledge sharing and peer-to-peer -peer networks are available and built up so that trusted voices, leaders in the industry, can convey information uh, to their colleagues. That's been shown over and over again to be the most effective way to achieve information transfer in this industry. Our third objective is to complete an analysis of the various opportunities and incentives for uh, accessing capital for energy efficiency or emission reduction. What does that mean? So taking a comprehensive look at the scope of programs that are currently available. We've hired the Sea Grant Law Program at Roger Williams University to undertake that analysis. So they'll be inventorying state and federal programs that are available uh, and not only describing the deep intricacies of how those programs operate, including interviews with the staff who administer them, but also making recommendations for ways to improve those programs uh, or limitations that have been identified by program participants. Our fourth objective is to establish baseline profiles of energy use in commercial fishing vessels in Massachusetts. Uh, we'll, we'll get to a detailed description of what that means in a few minutes. Fifth objective, assess, uh, assess opportunities and constraints associated with deploying emission reduction technologies. Um, so we'll be evaluating and auditing the, the various opportunities that currently exist uh, from a technical perspective. The sixth objective um, is to implement pilot projects to demonstrate alternative fuel systems. So we've reserved a quarter of our $2 million budget for the third and fourth years of this project, and we're going to be implementing large-scale pilot projects. Um, whether those are involving alternative approaches to propulsion or something else is unclear at this time. What we're going to do is we're, we're going to learn from the earlier phases of the work in the first two years, and then we're going to come together with our advisory committee, representatives of ports across the state, and we're going to discuss what the opportunities are. Uh, we're hoping to leverage that half a million dollars against some other opportunities for fundraising so we can uh, hopefully extend the reach of these pilot projects significantly. Uh, and then the seventh is to uh, recruit and provide shoreside seafood businesses with energy efficient capital program advice and audits. And Lori's going to speak to that. The eighth objective is to develop and deploy a comprehensive fishing vessel energy audit. So we're going to create a program where commercial fishing vessel owners can uh, place equipment on their vessel that will inventory their energy use. And then uh, through that, we will provide boutique services to be able to recommend all options for fuel efficiency measures aboard their boats. And the ninth objective, this is the last one, is to create and distribute roadmaps for future adoption of fuel efficiency and emission reduction technologies. So that's, uh, that'll be a written report uh, combined with a series of in-person workshops across port communities to be able to uh, take a, a fleet profile for a port and then describe the ways in which fuel efficiency and carbon emission reduction can be achieved uh, with cost effectiveness and technical feasibility. Okay, um, we're going to shift gears and get a little bit technical, and uh, I'm going to also bumble through someone else's presentation, which uh, is uh, going to be a challenge, so bear with me, but this is the, uh, the presentation given by our engineering technical consultants, Chandler Kemp and Ben Mathis, who are both 
Alaskans and are participating in a program run by the Alaska Longline Fishermen's Association, which is going to be putting the first diesel electric hybrid boat uh, in, in the country in service this year or next year. And, uh, and Chandler and Ben are designing that system. So this set of slides is going to talk about uh, or, or going to demonstrate the existing technical approaches which are basically state-of-the-art for the small and medium-sized fisheries of the United States. Um, here's the outline of their presentation. So first, starting uh, with the recent work that they've done. So they have rolled out energy use assessments on 49 boats in Alaska. 29 of those have completed sea trials and more than 50 uh, of these vessels are using the energy assessments or the energy audits that these folks have developed in order to participate in that REAP program. So already demonstrating that the use of energy audits can be turned directly into information that's critical to applying for these grants for, uh, for efficiency upgrades. The so-called ETIP, or Energy Transition Initiative Project Partnership, is the program that is financing that, uh, that first hybrid vessel. Um, it's a partnership through the National Renewable Energy Laboratory at DOE uh, and a couple other organizations. First, what they did is they uh, modeled in, in the early phases of this work, the energy use applications in the Alaska fleet out of Sitka, uh, and basically determined that um, fuel consumption on shorter trips uh, could be significantly reduced on a hybrid powertrain, uh, but the longer your trip, uh, the less fuel savings you achieve with the hybrid powertrain. Still uh, about a 20% reduction in fuel use on a 12-day trip, which is just about the longest trip that a lot of these boats in Southeast Alaska uh, fishing for halibut or salmon are taking. Um, but the one-day trip is a great use case for the hybrid model with about 80% reduction in fuel consumed. Uh, these folks are also participating in a Canadian project in Nova Scotia the Canadians are way ahead of us. They've put about nine uh, hybrid boats in the water this year, as I understand it, uh, looking at the Nova Scotia lobster fleet as their uh, test case. Um, and a lot of those efforts are funded, I think all of those efforts are funded by the Canadian federal government and their Department of Fisheries and Oceans. So there's uh, certainly our neighbors to the north are leading the charge here. Uh, in partnership with the various Canadian firms that are developing these new technologies. And there appears to be broad adoption from the fleet up there. So uh, certainly leading the charge, and we have a lot to learn from the Canadians. But we are working directly with the folks who are doing that work, so we will learn from them directly. Uh, this is the power plant that is being developed for that power troller in Alaska. Uh, I won't pretend to be able to uh, pronounce that correctly, um, or at least I could guess and uh, be a 50-50, but the, the zero emission fishery and aquaculture vessel uh, approach that these guys are developing um, is, uh, is advancing rapidly and uh, basically a boutique engineering application. The, the information that we got from these guys basically it, it indicates that there's a, a tremendous amount of design work associated with, with these power plants. It's, it, it's an incredibly uh, challenging task to do these retrofits because every fishing vessel is different and every engine room compartment, every uh, system, that 
is currently in place that uses energy, whether it's refrigeration, hydraulics, etc., cetera, uh, is going to be configured uniquely and will either need to be uh, replaced or uh, re-engineered entirely, uh, or the, the new system uh, may not be appropriate for that platform. Next slide, please. And there's a lot happening. Um, a lot of activity in this area um, and a lot of additional uh, opportunity here. But again, the, the key lesson that we've learned is you need to assess your energy use in your fleet in order to understand the appropriate type of technology that should be implemented broadly across fishing vessels. Um, so we'll talk about how they measure energy use. These are the techniques and approaches that we are going to be using in this project. Uh, first, you evaluate where fuel is used in propulsion. So there's a, a diesel power plant, fuel is consumed. And we use fuel flow meters to, which, which evaluate basically sense the amount of volume of fuel and the temperature of the fuel uh, because diesel expands um, uh, when, it's, when it's warmed up. Uh, so you measure the, the flow and the return and you can evaluate how much fuel is consumed. There's the shaft. Uh, you use a device called a strain gauge which is uh, a one-time calibration to determine uh, with some arithmetic the amount of energy that is being exerted, the, basically the amount of torque on the propeller shaft uh, as a function of fuel that's consumed in engine RPM. And then you can uh, determine the amount, basically the kilowattage required to move the boat during its various operations, steaming or uh, towing fishing gear, for example. Hydraulic systems are also incredibly energy intensive. Um, they operate pumps, they operate deck machinery, uh, and in many cases they operate refrigeration systems if boats are equipped. Uh, so a huge uh, part of the, the fuel bill, so to speak, goes to these systems and they need to be quantified as well. And so you put a pressure sensor on the hydraulic lines Yep. So if there's um, a, a hydraulic system powering a refrigeration system, then you will evaluate at that. Or if they're, like a lot of these boats, if there's an auxiliary generator powering the refrigeration system, then you will put uh, a fuel f flow meter for the generator and an amp meter for your uh, electrical refrigeration system. Yeah. And then for all of your electrical systems, uh, your, your DC bank, you also put an amp meter on and you assess the amount of electrons flowing to that system. And that is how you evaluate the energy use on a fishing boat. Um, so in order to put all those sensors and devices on a, on a boat, the, the sensor package costs about uh, thousand dollars per boat and takes about a half a day to install and then the that strain gauge which evaluates the amount of torque necessary to turn the prop shaft that's a separate half a day installation and, uh, and a test out in the harbor just to calibrate the system um, so not terribly intensive honestly uh, you can do it when a boat's tied up for a day um, and, uh, and uh, minimally intensive. So we're, we're planning on deploying this same set of sensor packages on about two dozen boats throughout Massachusetts designed to uh, reflect the diversity of vessel types and fisheries in the state. We just recently, last week, had these dudes from Alaska down and they installed three sensor packages on boats in Alaska. We aimed for two, we got three done, so exceeding expectations already, and we're going to be getting data off of these boats um, for 
months and months this year uh, and already are starting to be able to assess the energy baseline in Massachusetts. So this part of the presentation talks about how we will uh, provide this information for fishermen so, um, so that they can understand their own energy use and as we said earlier, provide information for the grant programs like DIRA and REAP uh, that are currently available. So they'll get information like um, the amount of shaft power at various different speeds as a function of, uh, of engine RPM uh, under various operations. So you know, you're, you're, when you're towing a, a trawl through the water, for example, you're, uh, if you're, you're, your energy load is going to, or your, 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 the load on your propulsion system is significantly greater than when you're steaming, so you need to understand the profile of energy use and fuel consumption across those different functions. Uh, so those are all provided in this report uh, that's generated systematically for each participating vessel. <laughs> Next, please. And like we said, uh, these data help fishermen apply for grants. Uh, you can also infer additional information um, by comparing different vessel types that are operating in similar environments. Um, so this example that they chose were the different types of, um, of, uh, of hull material uh, when there's a refrigeration system involved. So uh, fishermen can make a selection about uh, what type of uh, vessel to invest in uh, if refrigeration is a key part of their operations. And there are many other examples. Uh, so here are some examples of pilot projects. Uh, here, let's just uh, use this slide to show you what that strain gauge looks like. So that uh, rectangular postage stamp looking thing is the strain gauge. It's glued onto the shaft and then it uh, provides a, a, an electrical signal to that little box, which is attached to the shaft by a cable tie. And uh, again, through some fancy arithmetic, you can determine the amount of strain or, or torque required to spin the shaft. And this is the boat that's going to be getting that hybrid power plant next year. Um, the fishing vessel Igata. Um, he mostly fishes for salmon, halibut, and black cod uh, using troll gear and fishes in Southeast Alaska um, based out of Sitka. So there are, um, in addition to the power plant, there are also uh, systems on deck that are going to be converted from hydraulic to electrical. Uh, the, the biggest example, or the, the most energy consuming Example are these uh, the so-called the, the girdies, which are used to uh, to release and let in uh, or or re uh, or, or uh, reel in uh, the troll lines. Uh, let's see. Just uh, briefly, a schematic here is shown of the system that they're going to be using. I will not pretend to describe it with expertise. They call it a transfluid system and uh, there are some safety precautions that are being engineered into it, um, so-called come home system where if the battery electric component uh, fails, there will still be a way to uh, get the boat back to port uh, in some sort of limp mode. Um, and beyond that, I would suggest if you're interested in this sort of thing, uh, there's Google. <laughs> skip this one. Uh, we spoke about electrical deck gear. Uh, another part of this project is um, in addition to the IGATA, there's going to be a second boat that's going to be just solely converting the hydraulic deck gear to electrical gear. And uh, through that effort, they'll be able to quantify a more limited set of fuel efficiency upgrades, uh, which will be valuable for Massachusetts. Um, although it's a different set of gear generally, we'll still be able to understand the potential for switching over to electrical from hydraulic as an, a fuel saving measure. Uh, 
Um, and uh, the application to this project, although I've already alluded to that to a significant degree, um, we're going to be learning from the Alaskan example, and we're going to be uh, building out from the energy assessment phase to in installation of proven efficiency measures, modeling of those efficiency measures as a function of fuel use that we ascertain throughout the baseline project, so the, the quantification of fuel use in the fleet, and then that will inform the selection of our pilot project. And this says what I just said. Okay. Um, in addition to the hardware component, there is also a communications component to this. Um, I'm just going to briefly uh, summarize the side of the work that Josh Wiersma with Integrated Monitoring is going to be doing for this work. Uh, basically, in addition to uh, storing the data that we're gathering from the sensor package locally, we're also going to use telecommunications equipment to uh, be able to access those data in real time. Um, I'm just going to quickly take over here. We'll be, using, we'll be using onboard wireless technology. Uh, we'll be installing these servers, uh, which are, uh, they use a protocol called the uh, NEMA 2K protocol, um, and they'll be hooked in on the Verizon network. So we'll be able to uh, access in real time as well as in, in, uh, in um, you know, over, over periods of trips that we know fishermen are taking the results of the uh, sensor uh, test. <laughs> Move on now. Um, here is a, a set of diagrams of the, of the sensor package. Um, fuel flow meters, displays, data recorders, uh, amp meters, etc. So um, you know, again, about $1,000 per boat. So pretty cost effective. And again, um, we are going to be storing all these data in the cloud. So with, with, a, with a, on secure servers, so there's a, a, we're taking data privacy and proprietary information seriously here. Um, despite the fact that this is a federal project, we have uh, full ownership of the data. We can skip that. And let's skip that. And let's see, uh, yes, so this, this is a picture of the strain gauge calibration system uh, for those who are interested. It's a little box um, that costs $40,000. Um, so luckily we got ours on loan from Alaska, um, realizing some major cost savings there. Thanks, please. Um, we'll, we'll hold questions at the end. Um, and you get to hear Loey speak now for a change. And I'll just take a break and I'll advance your slides for you. So uh, I'm focused on the shoreside businesses. Um, and uh, um, uh, but I don't know anything about boats. So, but, uh, So Green Energy Consumers Alliance, we've been around for 40 years and we've been focused on energy, uh, saving energy all of those um, years. Um, from a consumer point of view, uh, we are a nonprofit and we operate in both Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Um, this program is just going to be in Massachusetts for now. And we do advocacy as well as uh, uh, pragmatic programs. Um, so we're going to be trying to talk with the owners uh, about three things. One is their buildings and equipment, uh, their vehicles, and the charging of those vehicles if they're electric, and then where are they getting their electricity from, and could they potentially uh, get storage equipment to offset those high demand charges. Um, so buildings and equipment, yeah. Um, so the sources of the incentive, there are many layers, and that's why we're in this picture, because we can help navigate uh, these many layers of potential incentives. There's the federal um, tax 
code. Um, there's the state uh, incentives through Mass Save and uh, Cape, Pal Cape uh, Light Compact. Uh, and then there are municipal power companies as well in some of the shoreside communities. There is a federal tax deduction um, for all sorts of energy efficiency measures. Um, uh, it's a you know somewhat complicated thing to figure out, so probably more appropriate for the larger businesses uh, that um, uh, you know can manage that. Um, and I have links to the appropriate forms for those who are interested. Um, Mass Save um, is, uh, as you may know, a, a a nation leading energy efficiency program. Um, it's divided into a residential program and a commercial program. Many of us know about the residential program, but the commercial program, is, you know, you can only take advantage of it if you've got enough time away from your job to think about how to make your job more efficient and, and where the funds might come from. Um, uh, MassSave is um, operated by the utility companies, Ashwood Eversource, Cape Light, um, and, and the other utilities in the, in, in the, uh, in the state. Um, and they have a lot of different uh, programs, um, weatherization meaning insulation basically, uh, lighting, HVAC, equipment, um, demand response, uh, I think batteries, um, and refrigeration, although the refrigeration that's in their standard program is like for restaurants and stores, not for freezing fish in a massive quantity. Um, but they do have custom incentives and technical support for, um, okay, you're wanting to, you know, you've got a piece of equipment we've never, you know, incentivized before, or we've only done one of those. Um, so we'll do that as a custom, or we'll try to figure out what, what's, what we can do to help you with. Um, for HVAC in particular, um, there are basically two paths. One is you're keeping your fossil fuel system, and the other is you're replacing your fossil fuel equipment with um, heat pumps. When I say fossil fuel, I mean you're burning gas or oil or propane uh, in the machine or in the building uh, as opposed to electricity. Which be generated by fossil fuels somewhere else we acknowledge that um, and um, yeah so whether it's whether it's repairing or buying new things um, uh, or tweaking it you know a variant refrigerant flow you know uh, heat pump etc um, mass safe can talk to you about all of those different HVAC options um, we have an extensive heat pump, Green Energy Consumers Alliance has an extensive heat pump program, um, so you can find information on our, on our website um, that's specifically focused for residential, um, but if you want a, a, an introduction to what heat pumps are, how they work, et cetera, um, we do webinars and uh, have a website next, please. So vehicles, this is a, an electric truck, um, and um, there are incentives for electric trucks. Um, the, there's a federal incentive, and that is um, either 30% of the sales cost or an incremental cost that's based on, um, I'm not exactly sure what that incremental cost is based on, um, but it's divided according to the size of the, uh, of the truck, and I have another link so we can follow through on that if anybody has information. And I have flyers on both uh, EV purchasing, EV truck purchasing, and EV charging infrastructure uh, incentives. Next. Um, so there's also incentives for setting up a charger in a commercial location. Um, again, 30% of the cost of the, of the um, installation, or 6% if you're, mm -hmm. if you're depreciating that, that infrastructure. Um, and it includes the bi-directional charging, uh, which is uh, where we're all going to eventually, where you'll be able to uh, have your truck parked and uh, when you're not needing to use that battery to go somewhere, you can actually use that battery to run your freezer. 
um, and that is going to be really important for helping with the demand charges um, because the, 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 all the the infrastructure, all the all the vehicles have huge batteries in them, and you can use them as backup power for your um, for your uh, home or your or your business uh, if you have a bi-directional charge. Next, please. Um, and there's a great uh, federal electric vehicle funding finder tool um, that we wanted to point people to. Um, I can share these slides with anybody uh, who wants the, who wants the links afterwards. Next, please. So moving on to the state level, um, the more EV program is for uh, you know personal vehicles, and the more EV truck is for um, uh, for the trucks, and um, you know significant rebates up to ninety thousand dollars depending on the on the class of the vehicle. And I'll note there's the extra ten percent for EJ communities environmental justice EJ environmental justice, um, and. Um, there's a map where you can actually put in your address. Do I live in an environmental justice community? And it'll let you know if you qualify for that. There's also uh, incentives for um, charging, and um, uh, you know, there's a whole program for that. Where again, they'll pay 60% of the installation costs. So, if, um, uh, for instance, I was down at um, Cape. Uh, Cape Seafood uh, this afternoon and they have like uh, 17 forklifts or something like that and you know maybe actually uh, you know what uh, that are electric and maybe actually a charging thing might make sense for them um, but more more and more to, to investigate next slide please um, the utilities also have um, uh, EV charging um, incentives uh, because they want to sell you the electricity through the charging thing, and so they'll incentivize it as well. There's more uh, links there. Does anybody have a municipal electric um, account here in Gloucester? No. Okay. Um, so we have a lot of resources on our website uh, for electric vehicles, um, and uh, and lots of webinars. So we're happy to share that information too. So electricity and storage, these are, I believe, some big batteries. Okay, next slide. Um, so you can put solar on your facility, um, and there are definitely um, incentives for that. There are two types, basically. The SMART program is um, uh, a set amount of incentive when you sign your contracts, you know for the next 20 years you're going to be getting this um, this incentive for every kilowatt that your that your system produces. Or there's net metering, which is a more variable value, um, so you can get a lot of money one year and less the next year, producing the same amount of electricity because it's based on market forces. Um, and you would work with your installer to choose one. Next, please. Um, federal incentives, there is the um, uh, incentive for installing um, solar. Um, there's also a production tax credit, so that's um, based on how much you're producing versus the investment tax credit, which is how much equipment you're purchasing. Um, and uh, there are extra federal incentives for um, what are called energy communities, which is basically where a, where a fossil fuel power plant has been, uh, and some other descriptions. So, for Salem, for one, uh, would be um, an energy community. Next. Uh, and you can definitely combine battery with solar. This is, you know, the cat's meow. Uh, we, can, we can really lower our, our energy costs if we can harvest uh, the sun, which you don't have to pay for the fuel coming in that way. You just have to pay for the equipment. And if then you can store it um, so that that uh, relatively inexpensive power that you've created, um, you can then use at the most expensive time of the year demand side charges. I've heard a lot from um, uh, the seafood industry um, uh, businesses uh, are killing them. Uh, because they've got to keep that fish cold and they've got to process that fish when the boat comes in, whether it's a 
um, a high peak uh, energy day or not, and the price of electricity on those high peak days is exorbitant, um, so they're, they're stuck with high demand charges. Uh, but um, there are definitely um, incentives for uh, a battery storage now as well. Geothermal, if we do have um, uh, space around, if we find there's a, um, uh, a, a shoreside business that does have, say, a large parking lot that has the right soil underneath it for a geothermal um, installation, <laughs> then potentially we could help people uh, get a geothermal ins uh, installation, and that is super efficient because if you're able to tap into the energy below ground, it could be, you know, minus 20 in the parking lot, and it could be 50 degrees, just, you know, three feet down. And uh, then you'd be capturing that, that heat out of that 50 degree ground and using it to um, make it a lot easier to keep your house warm or your business warm um, or your fish cold. Um, so there are big incentives for that as well. Um, if people are interested in solar, we highly recommend Energy Sage. Um, Energy Sage is a company, for profit company. Uh, it's based here in Massachusetts, but it serves people uh, nationwide. And they provide um, solar, basically a solar shopping service. If any of you has ever um, called for, ah, I'm interested in finding out how much solar I could get on my house, and then for the next 20 years, you're getting calls every week from somebody who wants to sell you solar because you got on the marketing list and it's terrible. Well, Energy Sage cuts that out. They do the shopping for you, or they didn't do the shopping for you, but they get all the bids for you. And they present it in apples to apples format, which really increases your ability to understand what the coins are saying. So it's a really great um, uh, service and they do solar plus batteries, plus heat pumps, plus EV charging. Um, so it's a really wonderful, um, trusted uh, partner of ours. And green municipal aggregation. Um, so Gloucester is one of the companies uh, in the state that have um, uh, said to the utility companies, um, thank you for your um, role as going out into the energy marketplace and buying enough energy for all of our businesses and residents. But we actually are gonna hire somebody else to do that. There's a law that allows them to do that. And it's advantageous for the cities because they can enter the market whatever month of the year they want. The utilities are required to go to the market in two specific months. And they can sign a contract for as many months as they want to. They can sign it for three years if they want to, whereas the utilities are always required to buy for six months. So the utilities are a little bit hamstrung. They do serve that purpose of being the um, buyer of last resort, the provider of basic service, but municipalities now have the power to do that, to hire a consultant to do that for them. And it means that a lot of municipalities have been able to lock in lower rates, lower electric rates. So this is a great idea if you, as a business owner or an individual, haven't already um, uh, found a competitive supplier that's even cheaper, um, you can use the, um, the, the uh, municipal aggregation. I did talk with Jerry today, I think we're gonna be able to sell him like, save him like three cents per kilowatt hour. And given the, the number of kilowatts that he uses, uh, that could be a significant savings just by switching to the Gloucester application. So, and we have lots of information on our website about uh, this application. Um, so my contact information and Larry is our executive director and um, we always have uh, events greenenergyconsumers.org events. So thank you very much and I'm happy to take questions when you're ready. Yeah. A couple more slides, we're almost done. Thank you. So if we didn't make it clear earlier, uh, we have brought green energy consumers and Lowy's incredible expertise into this project. We are going to be offering 
audit services and consulting services through green energy consumers to every seafood business in the state. If you want it, you can get it. And uh, it's already started to happen. As Lloyd mentioned, uh, visited the uh, uh, Gloucester. Cape, Cape Fish, Cape Seafood, great. Uh, so it's happening now and it's going to be a, a tremendous set of opportunities for shoreside businesses to participate in the energy revolution. John Jalon, who didn't come to this meeting, find the information. Is there a case besides having that? I took that, but I've never seen anything anywhere. We'll get there. We were on Facebook this week. Okay. Um, I shared a lot of your stuff, but I know there's a lot of people who want something and it's kind of hard. Like you said, somebody, the, the energy one, you just said it before, that if someone wanted to call and have you do the work for us, because my seniors, or uh, everyone gets bombarded by calls because they sell it. Mm -hmm. What number should they call? I got the, this one at the end to put on my Facebook page, at Larry and Lowell. Is that the one we contacted? Have you contact people for us? Sure, sure, that would be fun. Um, don't give out Larry's because he's the executive director. Well, no. that's what I'm saying. We need to know because yeah. the, the slide you showed didn't give. It just gave a little bit. Yeah, of this is so. This this information is for you, and we'll get you information that's for the not public. Enough. I know. So, we'll, so we are going to get you, you're asking for it, you're going to get it. We're going to provide information to this group that you can share broadly uh, for fishing community members so that you can have ready, ready access to participate in this program. Yeah. And for anybody here tonight, there is a QR code. You can uh, click on that and, and you add your contact information basically on a form. And we'll call you. So we just spent an hour and a half talking about two of the nine program objectives for this project. It's dense, it's, uh, it's making good use of this opportunity based in fishermen's knowledge and perceptions of the needs for energy efficiency evaluation and what shoreside businesses can already access today using the best people in the game. So to this provide is recorded. Where will it be shown? Susan? We don't know. We'll give it to you. We can show it. And absolutely. 1623. Everyone should have like a link. We could have a link because, you know, this is very information. People want to see. People now under my title, it's not just fisheries, it's environmental justice. And I've been in, involved in environmental issues a long time because I've been working with Susan and Valerie Nelson and everything else is that this is long coming. And I don't want to be the person when my great grandchild said, Who's the stupid idiot that could have done something, did nothing? I don't want them to say it's me. Okay, well, it's going to happen. And so we need to be proactive in order to do that. We need the information out there. Because I don't want them to say, Well, I don't know. Yeah. That's everyone's favorite word is, How did I get it? I didn't know. So, so Fabio, would you like the, um, the slides and the video? And the Whatever you like that you want me to we're, share, we're except be that, guy's, that guy's name. <laughs> Climate Coalition. Perfect. Yeah, we'll, we'll, what we'll do Thank is you. we'll put together a, a set of information that you can provide publicly, knowing full well that right. it's going to direct it people to the right place. Give out other people's uh, yeah. emails, whatever. She'll put it on the Cape Ann Climate. We'll share it. There was Dick Prouty here too with Green uh, Town, which is great that I share a lot of their things, mm -hmm. and we need to do that. And then, you know what? A great presentation that people don't come like this should go up to the City Council under new business. You should mm -hmm. do a presentation. It really should. That's because you want to get maybe new consoles or not or whatever you may get, but it should be done to the city of Gloucester. Appreciate that. So thank you all. That's the end of our slides. And uh, 7 o'clock and, and change. Uh, we'll call it good. Angela's going to field some questions. Um, or I guess all, all of us can. And uh, did, you had your hand up earlier. I just wanted to sure. know the the slide deck with in particular the the green energy consumers links i believe is uh in the it's shareable right yes. all that information can yep. can go out yeah sure we can we can put it in a position where it's uh it's shareable also, for everyone knows, I did get a text with Mayor Margaret Farns and Representative Mayor Margaret Farns and getting all this information for her. She's also asking questions. 
So she saw that she couldn't make it tonight, but she's very interested, and thank you for doing this um, to the fisherman's wife and yourself, and she's very thankful. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Susanna Altenberger, to a boat in France. My late husband started designing boats in 1952. About 680 designs, all buildable. One of our boats for a few years held a world record as a solar powered long distance runner. Just somebody who privately did this for fun because the boat allowed that. We've been looking at this issue for over 20 years with a dedicated focus on energy efficiencies in the fishing fleet. 2006, I'm approached by Equal Trust of Canada, the fund out for a full week onto Vancouver, BC, and then Vancouver Island. I'm hosted by a provincial highliner. He's fishing Georgia Strait, 7,000 hooks, 26 times a year. No bycatch got discarded. It's all stays on boats in six different holes and fully electrified and I mean fully wired for observation, not electrification. This was an old wooden boat, as green as you can make it in, in, in under certain circumstances. We looked at boat yards, we looked at bulbous bowers, people were fooling around with the hydrogen injection. People did all sorts of things that you're talking about today, literally 20 years ago in BC as a minimum. Some folks are in Washington State. 2010, I'm invited by University of Alaska, Fairbanks, to give a talk at the first international conference on energy use in commercial fishing, Seattle, Washington, November 14th through 17, 2010. Again, 18 nations out, they might have to listen to me for an hour or something. So and, it's and we late, went, Can, is there a question? Yes, we went through all of this. Again, bottles of power, hydrogen injects, this and that. I hope you're making progress on this, but I don't see yet the focus on what is actually in need of getting done. And as I said to Marquis folks, and we've been discussing this issue for many, many years, that there need to be actually some other photo opportunities for $2 million to be accountable to somebody somewhere. Because the gadget here in this great fund, and a lot of technologies enjoy doing this. We know them too. But there's limits how far this can possibly be pushed. I wish you strength. It's a good thing to try for. But this is taxpayer funding, and it better be going where it really does make truly a difference. Public failures conceptual or technological is not what we need. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Any other questions? So this is all through the grant, and the grant's going to be like it's not a grant. It's not a grant. Can you walk and explain that to everyone? I said that. Again. Again. Well, people who say grant. This is not a grant, it's an appropriation, Thank you. which is totally different, you know, than, than grant. And we are, um, uh, this project is uh, under the National Sea Grant Agency. So it's the, but it's supposed to go to NOAA, and, and then NOAA send it to Sea Grant, which is a great organization to work with. So we, we're doing what we're doing, we, we, we get talking to these people every week or so, because uh, like, you can just put it in and say, okay, out of that to $1.9 million, we have to send them huge in invoices to change the amount of money. So we, we get the money monthly. It's not that we got the supply of money and we have sitting at the, at the back. It, it, it's a constant watchdog. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the people who were in Boston and uh, um, August 23rd. Was that? Yeah. And, uh, and you had a board set up or a different We have an advisory committee of about people. Yeah. I'm not on and I'm asking questions for everyone else. But this is, else. remember, this is here just for Boston. This is for up and down the coast. From the tip of the uh, province down all the way to the Rancho border. So we make sure we so are the advisory board the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. I want to it's an industry I get all these questions. advisory committee. Yes. It's volunteer. They're volunteer. They're paid for their travel. Uh, and uh, they are, they are for, for fishermen who are invested in the industry and taking time, they are paid. First of all, thank you for uh, joining and helping and all the yeah. you come to get some information to answer it again. We're staying on top of the industry and making sure that, you know, what our fishermen have a voice. 
it's very important because um, you know if they do put their lives out there and they do want to conserve energy and they do want to make sure it's the best out there and work with the people because they are the biggest environmentalists but people don't understand that so thank you for bringing that forward. Well, I, I was very happy that this effort this year will be kind of bring upon hundred years of feeding the world basically that's what we've been doing and we continue to do it. But and a lot of great things that we use today were people lost. You know, it lost this a little town, but we have a lot of things that all have been here that they are benefiting the whole world, not just the United States, but you know, the whole world. And if we go back to Mr. Bird's eye with the freezers, everybody around the world knows freezers is using them, they can save food, which is so low value. So if we, for 46 years, if just people think, oh, we just want to deal with the fishing, we don't like the way. That. We have worked so hard on all the different environmental issues, like the offshore oil drilling, the fish farm, the Google's Island, the tire reef, the dumping site, and the list goes on. And so I am very pleased with myself that we are working in this project because it will take the standard for the rest of our discussion boards around the country. Because in all probably my mind started when one of the Boston boats, the big, the big boats that we have, and we don't have as many as we used to, came to me when the price of fuel was very heavy. I the boats were paying close to six dollars a gallon, and the guy, the, the, the boat owner, kept on paying to raise his schedule. We stock today $85,000 for seven day of fishing. 45000 is my food. Hmm. I am the vulnerable fishing. The men who work on the wheel and the men to give to the people who work on the deck and the fishing boat. Something has to give. And then all this came tumbling down. But it is the truth. The price of fuel for the fishing is out of control. And when things go all right, it's a lot a big loss. Because I know the price has come down, but not as it should really be, you know, for them. So let's talk so like everything else we've done in the last we move outside and benefit the whole country and the world. Well, well thank you for that. Um, um, we have to leave soon, so I just want to thank everybody for being here. Um, especially want to thank um, the hostess Angela. for the best cookies. And the hostess, <laughs> okay, she was last. <laughs> and uh, um, the fitness wives, um, Angela and Sophia and Noah. And so don't thank me because really? I have nothing to do with this at all. <laughs> I'm learning about everything else. And so the boys, she did it, I just am a member. All right, well, thank, thank you. Anyways, we, we um, have to wrap it up, and we thank you so much. Thank you.